everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is Madden 17 on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we have a dangerous team. The Patriots are top 10 in turnover differential. And they'll be up against the Seahawks team that wants to be careful not to play into that strip. So let's get you up to Foxborough as we check in with our commentators, Brandon Dunn and Charles Davis. Larry, we are about an hour's drive southwest of downtown Boston in the area known as Patriot Place, Gillette Stadium here in Foxborough. Coming up is a rematch of that memorable Super Bowl 49 between the Seattle Seahawks and the New England Patriots. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Patriots team entering play. They're halfway home, looking good at a perfect 8-0. And not much to complain about so far, is there? I'd have to say they're the best team in the NFL through the first half of the year. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Seahawks, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. And I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. Tyler Lockett now with a return. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They run it again with Lacey. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. Third play here this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Here's Wilson. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on and it brings up fourth down. So on now is the 11-year man John Ryan to punt it away. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And he's going to be stopped here on this first play as he gets it to the line of scrimmage and no more. The tackle made by K.J. Wright. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. Play action, now it's Brady. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The two-time Pro Bowler, Bobby Wagner, in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Well, there was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Brady. He's got time. And that is incomplete. Unable to get it to Gronkowski that time. And it's fourth down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude. 
but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Returnable for Lockett. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. They'll run it now out of the gun. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. I would not want to be an offensive lineman in today's NFL, especially not a center or a guard if you got to deal with these massive defensive tackles who could not just beat you with strength, but they can beat you with quickness and guile as well. They can get upfield and make plays. And a lot of times what they're taught, just go ahead and tackle everyone that comes in your area and keep the one with the ball. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. As the field starts to get condensed, the defense likes that a lot because now you don't have as much space to cover, but a well-run corner route there. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Lacey. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On second down, Wilson. That is caught at the seven-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Well, they brought in an extra defensive back here, so probably not expecting a run on third and three. A good call. Dancing to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now, that's disappointing for the defense. They had the advantage, had excellent coverage all over the field, but they let him get away, scramble, and pick up a first down and inside the five-yard line. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two, and they've got it here with a first down. They'll run it with Lacey. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Eddie Lacey, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks are able to strike for six. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. And result, touchdown. No, oh, he missed the PAT. No good on the extra point, so a let down there, and this will stay a six-point ball game. The kick unit for the Seahawks out there on the field, and we are ready to rock. Set to return, this is Brandon Cooks. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Wait, 
Brady to throw on second down. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They'll run with Gellisliff. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Throwing on second down. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tap and foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Now Gillis with. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's gonna earn him a new set of downs. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one, you know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. They stay on the ground, this is Gillisley again. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And a first hookup with his all throw tight end, Rob Gronkowski. It goes as a gain of eight, it moves the chains. And the two-minute warning lurking. This will probably be the last play before we hit him. Yeah, they want to get themselves in position to score in this last shot before the clock hits. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Throw complete right side to Cooks. It'll go as a gain of 12, and it'll be first down New England. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Second down following the incompletion. They slide Gronkowski outright. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. Over the middle, Julian Edelman, it's complete. And a loose football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Second down following the run. 
Now Wilson on second down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, and it's third down. A good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. An extra corner on the field for New England here on third down. Yeah, another DB. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. What often gets lost with Eddie Lacy when he's playing at his ideal weight is his agility and his quickness. But in this case, he's putting that together with his power. And with these early runs, if you're on the deep inside of the ball, you've got to stop that now or you're in for a long, long game. Again, it's Lacey, and he'll get this only up to about the 35. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And that's the type of play that... Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. On second down, here's Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. He'll lock it with a grab over the middle. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So here we go, first and 10 now. Now Wilson on first down. He's going to wind up and air it out. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. When teams take shots at the end zone, you've got to defend it the same way you would defend the first down sticks. You defend the goal line exactly the same way. They can't cross that. You play through the receivers. And on that play, that's exactly what they did and batted it away. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. And he comes back with one complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Both teams have done enough to be leading here to this point, but in a close game, you know the second half is going to have some more twists and turns, which should lead to some excitement. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Midway through the first quarter, with plenty of pressure this half and another sack. This one ends up as a loss of 11. Lacey's going to take it off the right side, and he'll take it in for a touchdown. Seahawks land the first punch. Patriots lined up at the 20. Okay, so Larry apparently giving us the silent treatment all of a sudden, and we're going to skip ahead to quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. 
And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. This is Gillisley. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, Brandon, so much for halftime adjustments. They still can't get anything going on the ground. It may be time to loosen things up and start flinging it around a little bit. They come out here in the eye. Here's Gillisley. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there, and it's third down. Michael Bennett's versatility, being able to play any position along the defensive front, allows him to make those types of plays. He finds good matchups and gets into the offensive backfield. And there it works for a tackle for loss. Well, they've got an extra defensive back out there now on third and 13. Brady now to throw. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. A nice gain of 21 yards. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. They've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. Brady. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Four yards remaining now on second down. Brady to throw on second down. He's got time in the pocket. It's caught left side by Cooks. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Oftentimes, when you're not winning at the point of attack for an offensive line, maybe they're getting out physical, spread things out a little bit, make it more of a one-on-one -on -one blocking scheme. Then you don't have to win it physically. You just have to win it by position. That may open things up for your running backs. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. 
You ever notice that when Tom Brady does get hit and dropped to the ground, there's some guys back to him pretty quickly to check on his health, aren't they? That's exactly right. He, for as much as he throws, doesn't take a lot of square shots, but took one there. He's really smart in the pocket, isn't he? Even out of the pocket. He understands where the pressure is coming from. He senses people. You're exactly right. Doesn't take too many direct ones. But that one, that one had to hurt. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. This will be fielded at the six. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On first down, Wilson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Dante Hightower coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. On second down, here's Wilson going up top. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Chung. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Naturally, we're going to say it was a poor pass, but the defensive guys say it was just a great play by them. They broke on the football, picked it off, and gave some momentum to their team. Now a handoff looking right. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more back now in Foxborough. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now Brady. And that's complete to Cooks. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Brady now on first down. Surveying the field. Wide open, Julian Edelman. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. A really nice gain of 25 yards. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Give him nine there on the first down completion. One of the selling points at the end route is against the quarterback, a really nice sight line to his receiver, and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success, as they did on that play. They'll try to run it in with Gillisley. And he is in. Touchdown, New England. Mike Gillisley, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Patriots have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. And they drew up the counter there. It worked. They're glad they drew up the counter. And a lot of times what you're trying to do is just simply get the defense moving in one direction. It doesn't take much. Even one step's enough. Get them going in one direction and then cut back against the grain and let your running back finish it off and get the work done. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line.
And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I like the boldness, and I like that they took a shot downfield, but it was well covered. He's able to get a hand in and knock it away. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners who have had the receivers on lockdown. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch-counterpunch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll see, I love it. we'll see if they dial it up this drive. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Mike Gillisley with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Pats take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, sometimes all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. The bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Oh, so close to an interception. Read that beautifully. Got his hands on it. Couldn't get it. And it's second down. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game. And I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking about is, we've got this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge, and they've missed a golden opportunity. Second and ten now, Wilson. The pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack. Although that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you're facing intentional grounding call. And that one drops incomplete as he got popped as he was throwing it. Ford here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. He finds his man, Baldwin. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 
the 45. That'll be a pickup of 29 yards there. And on fourth and long, somehow they're able to keep the drive going. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. Now a desperation throw deep downfield and nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away at its second down. But depending on the team, they call that an explosive play or a chunk play, the one that they got on the previous one. They tried to go back and get another one, didn't they? They did, but unsuccessful on that second attempt. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. He's going to let it fly. It's caught inside the 25. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. The last drive he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be, because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window, and it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know there's no quarterback in this league that's any good that doesn't throw an interception occasionally, and they usually bounce back in a big way. I've seen guys throw five and still find a way to win the game in the end. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. To throw again is Wilson. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Wilson will throw again. He's got time. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And they put it in the end zone, which was job one. Now they have to convert. And then it's decision time, isn't it? Yeah, so this is what all teams go through. You look at the clock, you're inside two minutes, look at your timeouts, make that onside kick decision. Yeah, how do you feel about your defense, where you are in terms of the scoreboard, and the time left on the clock, as you noted, hey, 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 so many things to go through. So they went for the two. They don't get it. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open. And whistle blown. A timeout here is taken, and it's taken by the kicking team. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So with just over a minute to play, this becomes a make-or-break onside kick. And this is secured by the Patriots. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at-bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh boy, four about three, and a game. Yeah, about the four, and a game. four times 162. 350 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up, get those blockings. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. After the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. 
And on the ground they go with the running back. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. The Patriots in the victory formation as they'll take the knee. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. They'll go ahead and take the knee here, and the unbeaten season will continue. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Just a bunch of poor boys, daddies, girls, children of the cornfield, trying to turn a shift job into a dollar bill.